Open your Bibles, if you would, this morning to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, one of my favorite epistles. Uh, to back up, you can start Revelation, hit Jude, 3 John, 2 John, 1 John. Okay? So 1 John chapter 1, we're going to look at the first 10 verses, which just have to be the entire first chapter. Short book. It was a book written for you. A book, John wrote this for you. So when you have an opportunity today, tomorrow, open it up. Five chapters. You can handle it. I'll give you the first ten today. All right? You may want to review those this evening and then finish out uh, the you know, next four chapters, which aren't any longer than that, okay? First John chapter 1, beginning of verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and declared to you. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we uh, claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Let's pray. <coughs> Our Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We pray, Lord God, that your word does not return void to you today. We pray, Lord God, that we have open hearts and are receptive to your word this morning, Lord that we may be filled, that we may be able to examine ourselves, Father, in light of your word. So help us this morning by your Holy Spirit to focus on what it is that you want us to know, Father. What, what one tidbit that will help us in our life's journey, Father. Give that to us this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, probably two months ago or three months ago, I lose track of time, certainly before the Advent season, after church one Sunday, someone, I was, I was talking to someone, and we talk about hope in our Christian walk, and the person, though, didn't have, they were talking about the hope of, well, hope that when I die, I go to heaven. You know, it, and just kind of that, maybe that little bit of an you know, I hope I'm good enough type of thing. And had conversation. I think, you know, I think everything's squared away there pretty good. But then uh, sometime over from that time to Christmas season, just in conversations with people out and about, I had that same type of a conversation with someone else. And so it just got me to thinking a little bit about, and we, you know, when we talk about grace, we talk about mercies and and of God, and we talk about faith, but made me start thinking a little bit in light of the epistle of 1 John, our certainty to help make you certain or help you maybe question a little bit, if you would, to help you clarify in your mind your belief. And that's what I'd like to share with you today. Just some points that I came up with over the last 8, 12 weeks, however it's been. And maybe you can question yourselves and we can look at most of the scripture will be taken out of 1 John. As to where you stand in the faith. And your conviction and your dedication and your commitment to God. So the first point is, is simply this. 
a Christian has fellowship with the Father and the Son. Fellowship. A Christian, a person who genuinely, truly says, I am a child of God, has fellowship with God. With His Son, Jesus Christ. Fellowship. I know as we sit here together and we're, 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 we're with one another and we leave here and we're, we're with people that we know and our friends at work and our family, we have, quote, fellowship. We have communication. We have time together. We have love for each other. Do you have fellowship with God? Do you have fellowship with Him? In the Scripture, in 1 John, what we read this morning in verses 3, 5, and 6, it says, Truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And this is the message, He said, which we have heard from Him and declare to you, that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Our fellowship is with God the Father and with His Son Jesus Christ, as we read in our scripture this morning. That is who our fellowship is with. He is the light of the world. And in Him there is no darkness. It is Him who we have the fellowship with. If, you know, if we say we have that fellowship, yet we walk in darkness, then we lie. And the truth is not in us. So let me ask you a question this morning. Pretty simple. Examine yourself, and how would you describe your fellowship with the Father and the Son. How would you personally, think about this for a moment, describe your fellowship with the Father and the Son? Do you think that God will allow you to walk in darkness, in the dark side of life, and still claim to be a Christian? It says that He is light. We read in the Gospel of John, that the light came into the world. So do you think he allows you to walk in darkness and still claim to be a Christian? Think of that. And how would you describe your fellowship with him this morning? As a Christian, we are to love the brethren. We are to love one another. <coughs> Excuse me talking about that light. He says, he who, and this is in the second chapter, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light. And there is no cause for stumbling in him if you're walking in the light. That's in the second chapter, verses 9 and 10. Are you in the light? If you're in the light, you cannot hate your brother. You cannot look at another Christian and have hate, animosity within you towards that person. That's hard. That really makes you examine yourself, doesn't it? You know, I walk, I walk with Jesus. I talk with Jesus. I am walking in the light. But I hate that person over there. And this one over here, I, I don't like that person either. Maybe I'm in darkness. Maybe I'm in darkness. We are to love our brothers. So the question for you is do you claim to be a Christian but you have hatred toward the brethren? I claim Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Can't stand to be around this person. And they're Christians themselves. Something to think about. 
something to think about. As a Christian, we are not to love the world's values. You know, we live in a dark world. We live in a dark world. And immorality is everywhere. Do you accept that? Do you accept the worldly view of things? Do you get wrapped up in what the world is doing? Again, going to the second chapter of 1 John, verses 15, 16, and 17, it says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Do not love the world or the things of the world. And it seems as if though it's getting worse and worse and worse every day. More and more immorality is popping up, is flourishing, is gathering, is populating, is polluting the world every single day. And if you claim to be a Christian, are you taking part in the worldly ways, in the lusts of the world? Are you a materialistic person? Is materialism, the things that I can possess, the things that I can gather, of far greater value than anything else? Is going to Las Vegas or Atlantic City or Memicolon even now, you know. Uh, boy, I tell you what, we, we, you know, I love me TV. Anybody watch me TV? You know, I watch, nobody watches me TV. Fan and I are the only ones in this church watching me TV. Jesse watched me TV. Okay, thank you for being honest this morning. Thank you for being honest. Do you ever see what they're advertising on me TV now between uh, the shows? Online, uh, what is it? Uh, get your cell phone out, right? Gambling online. You know, people live for that, doing that. You don't get, you're not up as late as I am, Jesse. I, I could, I could, I haven't, huh? I haven't watched it for a while. Okay. Well, online gambling is a big thing, you know, but is that something that's part of the world that's coming? Do you long for those kind of things, you know? Uh, the worldly things, going out to the bars and to the nightclubs and, and uh, or staying up with the latest fads and fashion. Yeah, you can tell I do. Is there anything here fan we didn't buy at Gabe's? You know? Uh, are you enticed by alcohol or drugs or food or pornography? What's your language like? Boy, I tell you what, you cannot turn on TV today even on family entertainment TV without being subjected to the language. You know, it's, it appalls us as adults to hear that. I couldn't imagine trying as a parent today raising a child and, to, and to, trying to protect them from that. But it's the way of the world. Pride? Are you a prideful person bragging about the good things that you do, the successes that you had? Where are you? It's the ways of the world. As a Christian, we are to be living in continual sanctification and righteousness. Continual sanctification and righteousness. Maybe my reading should have been out of the second chapter of John because going there again, it says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And He says, if you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of Him. Yeah. When you sin, and there's not a person here who does not sin, do you confess your sins? 
Are you quick to confess your sins to God? Your unrighteousness before Him? Each and every one of us sins. But do we confess those sins to God? He already knows that you sin, but He wants you to confess those sins to Him. Because He wants to have that communication and that fellowship with you. Confess your sins. As a Christian, do you practice charity? Let's jump up to the third chapter of John. I'm telling you, read the book tonight. 15 minutes and you haven't read. Read the book. In the third chapter of 1 John, it says, But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in, in deed and in truth. We, church, we are to practice charity. We are to practice love. If you see your brother or sister in need and you do nothing, how can you say that the love of God is in you? How can you say that you have fellowship with the Father and the Son? How can you say you're walking in the light if you see your brother or sister in need and do nothing? How can you say that? Are you indifferent concerning the poor? The poor in our church? The poor in the community? Does it just, is it just like water off of the back of a duck to you? That they're poor and you're not? That you don't really need to help them? They need to find their own way? Is it more important to you to buy the toys, the latest gadgets, the new phone, the new car, the new boat, the new house, the new camper, the new whatever? To prioritize that over helping someone in need. I'm not saying that those things are bad because they're not. But if it takes priority over helping someone in need, Maybe you want to examine yourself. Here's one that's concerning today for me. Is the false prophecies that are out there and the false teachers that are in this world today. They are everywhere. You get on your computer, you get on your phone, you get on, on, on your television. And you'll find false prophecy, false teachers. In the fourth chapter of 1 John, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. But this you know, the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. We who know God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But this we know, the spirit of truth and the spirit of of error. Do you know when you hear false doctrine? When someone is not speaking the truth. When they're maybe taking the word of God and distorting it. That they can make it for itching ears for people. To make them feel good. To make them feel good about their life. About what they're doing. Do you care about the truth and the accuracy of it? If you have a friend that is speaking false truth, 
you approach that person? Do you talk to that person? What do you do about that? Are you afraid to offend people by your convictions? You don't discuss religion? You're afraid to do that? Who is Jesus to you? Is he like any other founder of any other church? Or is he the true King of kings and there's no, no way to get to the Father but by him? Where are you on that? This may be simple, but a true Christian loves God. Loves God. I want you to examine yourself. Do I truly, truly love God? When you love something, it takes a priority. It is the number one thing in your life. All else is secondary to whatever it is that you love. Do you love God? We'll stick in that fourth chapter again. It says, we love Him because He, what? First loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from Him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Verses 19 21, chapter 4. You can only love God if you love your brothers. No one here has actually seen God. Therefore, how can you love God if you can't even love your brother? You must love your brother and then love God. That is how you love God. Do you ever tell him that you love him? Do you ever tell God that you love him? When you're communicating, when you're just talking with God, do you say, I love you, Lord? Or is it all about me and what I want and what He can do for me? What can you do for me, God? You're my good luck charm. Do you truly love God and do you express that love for Him? And when you wonder from the truth, as we all do sometimes, in other words, we fall away, we sin some. Do you love Him so much that you seek Him out and come back to Him? As a Christian, as a Christian, do you have the right view of Christ as being God in the flesh? And as the Christ, as the Messiah, in other words, what I'm saying is, to you, is Jesus Christ. Did Jesus Christ come to this earth in the flesh, as God, as man, as the Savior of the world. Do you view Him as that? We're going to jump into the fifth chapter, but before we do that, let's go back to the Gospel of John, if we could where it says in the very first part of the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We read that in the Gospel of John. The Word, Jesus Christ, was with God in the beginning, and now dwells with us. And then in the fifth chapter of 1 John, verse 1, it says, Everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. Born of God. God the Father. Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son. The deity of Jesus. Do you uphold that deity of, of Jesus? Is he... Is he deity in your life? Do you believe in your heart that Jesus is 
the Son of God. Take it one step further as our time is seeping away from us this morning. Do you believe in the Trinity? Do you believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Do you believe that? 1 John 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Are they co-equal to you? Is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit co-equal, co-eternal? See, that's part of the problem that, that the Jews had they were monotheistic, believed in one God, but they had they could not comprehend that God could be made up of three. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They struggle with that. How about you? Finally, as a Christian, are you diligent in reading His Word, attending church, taking of the Lord's Supper and praying. When you examine the year 2021, how did you do in those three areas? How did you do in reading of the Scriptures? How did you do in your church attendance? How did you do in taking of the Lord's Supper? And how is your prayer life? I guess that's the great thing about New Year's. That yesterday doesn't matter. It's today that counts. And what we're doing today. In the book of Acts, I know. That's in the Bible too, the book of Acts. In the book of Acts it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Acts chapter 2 is what they did. <coughs> they continued in the Word. They continued in gathering together. They continued in prayer and partaking of the Lord's Supper. So do you read God's Word? Do you have a time that you set aside to read His Word? You know, we're all guilty. We could all do better. We could all do better in that area. We read His Word when you read it, is God talking? Do you believe that God is talking to you through His Word? And I'd love to see everyone to continue to attend church on a regular basis. And I'm hoping that it come Easter time, I'm hoping that we can have our love feast and communion <coughs> to get back on track with that. And we have breaking of bread here on our Sunday morning services occasionally in your prayer life. Things just a question yourself about to examine. I hope you take those to heart today. As we come into 2022, I hope you can keep some of these things in mind. I hope that tonight, tomorrow, you'll take 1 John and see what it says. Read it for yourself. Apply it to your life. Amen. Amen. You know, those are just ten quick bullet points this morning. For you to take and just to think about, just to ponder about, for you hopefully to get into God's Word in 1 John. But here's the bottom line. It says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Yeah. Just declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10.9 And then in Ephesians 2.8 it says this, By grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Okay? All those points I had were good. But just... Declare with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead. You'll be saved. Knowing that it's grace. It's all grace. God is full of grace. He just wants to pour it out upon you. 
and he does pour it. I, I don't deserve any of it. You don't deserve. None of us deserves any of the grace of God. He just why I don't know. But he just pours it out on us. It's by His grace that we have been saved through our faith. It's not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. So blessings to you as you go to 2022. Looking forward to this upcoming year and all that God has in store for you individually, for this church in particular. Can't wait to see what the outcome's going to be.